Good evening, everyone. This is Gary Bennett at Excel Me. Welcome to our Objective C for Absolute Beginners. Tonight, we're going to be covering what's new in Xcode 4.0. This is going to be part one. Uh, probably for most of the month of April, every Wednesday night, I'm going to be covering some of the new features in Xcode 4. A lot of my students have been asking about it, so I figured it'd be helpful to put out a number of YouTube videos on it. So tonight, the first night, we're going to cover just kind of the basic layout of the IDE and then also how to simplify your workflow um, with um, saving a lot of your code snippets. And uh, there's kind of a nice little feature that uh, is provided us for that is new in Xcode 4 that allows us to keep a lot of our common code in one place where we can recall it by just typing a couple of letters or dragging and dropping. So let's go ahead and uh, get started by bringing up Xcode 4.0, which you can download from um, the Apple Developer Network, um, or you can download it from the Mac App Store. In order to download it from the um, de developer um, site for Apple, you have to be a, currently you have to be a iPhone developer and paid your $99, or download it from the Mac App Store. It's a $4 download, I believe, for that. So a little bit different. Uh, the previous ones were free. Um, it was uh, it came Xcode 3.2 point whatever came with uh, the download of your um, of your operating system or on the DVD that uh, you got when you bought your Mac. Um, and that might be true when the new Macs start coming out. They may have the new Xcode 4.0 on it. But right now that's the only two way to get it. Pay $99 or $4 for it. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. We can go ahead and um, take a look. And we up here at the very top, we have the ability to navigate to our different folders and our hierarchy tree here. So I can go and look at the code that's um, um, in my project. And again, these are all virtual groups. But this is a little bit new here at the top. Here I can look at the files in my project. Or I can go ahead and look at the symbol navigator as I'm doing my debugging. If I want to do any searches for um, for code or for uh, variables or classes, I can uh, look at my search results here. Any issues with my um, um, uh, my um, when I compile my application, if I have any errors or warnings, I can go ahead and click on here and see if I have any errors or warnings in my application. Um, over here, I can go ahead and look at any threads that are operating and what's going on in my debug section. Session. I can look at any breakpoints here and, um, and remove them or disable them um, in my code. And then over here, this little comment, se comment section is um, useful for seeing the history as I compiled my application, any output that I had uh, from my last run, is all being shown here if I had any output, as well as if I had any commits um, when I committed applications to my repository. And Xcode 4 now offers um, the option to use the Git um, repositories that are available from GitHub and um, a lot of your other uh, uh, repository websites. Uh, Beanstalk is a great one. Beanstalkapp.com is a great one. I'll show you how to do that the next night, uh, next Wednesday night. I'll do a YouTube video on that. So that's the top part. And the, like I said earlier, the biggest hassle is just kind of figuring out where everything is now and kind of deciphering it up here at top. Or I got my jump bar at the top. I can go ahead and navigate between um, my .h file and I can hold down the control command up arrow to go up and down between the .h and the .m file um, up here. And we'll talk more about the jump bar a little bit later on. Here's where I can go ahead and build my applications. If I hold down, I have some more options to test, profile, and analyze. I'll go through that later. Um, I can stop my application. I can choose what kind of build I want to do. If I want to do an iPhone, if I run it run on the device, or if I want to run it in the simulator, in which simulator. I'll talk more about schemes later. This is where we can go ahead and set up um, different types of build scenarios, whether it be debug, release, um, distribution, 
and um, and change the the frameworks in different types of builds and and projects. Here's where I can go ahead and stop and disable all my breakpoints or enable up. Here's kind of an iTunes um, um, setup for seeing visually my build status. So when I hit a build, I can see the process of the the build, the progress of the build, and any errors or warnings that I might have in my uh, in my application. And I can go ahead and stop it here as well. This is kind of a little test application I built for my students um, in my courses here, where they can go and see how the different uh, um, applications that we write um, work. And you know, I just kind of see what's going on here and bring up different um, different options. All right, so and that's all controlled also here when I'm running it from the IDE. I can go ahead and stop it and look at my console and we'll talk a little bit more how to lay that out here in a bit. Um, additionally, I can go ahead and look at um, the inspector um, or the file inspector as well for that any particular file. Up here is where I have my editor control. Over here is where I can look and split um, and look at uh, the uh, the files, the .h, or the .n, or any type of dependency, depending on what the, I want to say my counterpart is going to be. I can also look at superclasses, subclasses, all kinds of stuff with this. This is a useful tool. This is uh, allows me to compare. And let me just bring up um, another project that I have um, working with um, uh, repository. And if I go here, I can kind of see um, how this code has changed over time. I'll get this little update here. This is going to be what's on my machine. This is my local version. And then over here is compared against what was checked in on my repository. And I can click on this and say, OK, I want to see what it looked like uh, you know, a year ago. And um, and then when I do that, it's going to get updated. Sorry, it's running a little bit slow right now because of everything I have on here. But I can see my differences right here. So I can see this has been changed. That's been changed. So I can see that I've taken code and added code um, throughout the uh, that particular file. And again, to hop back, you can just go ahead and say, I want to hop back into the editor, and I'm good. And then over here, I can just say, do I want to say the navigator on the left? Do I just want to get rid of the um, all the output information down here at the bottom? Or do I want to get rid of the far right panel as well? Or do I want them all on? I can do this, and we'll talk more about the organizer, which is great for accessing when we need to do a, our device provisioning hooking into repositories and projects and archives. We'll talk about that as well. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about real quick, and we'll get into this other stuff later on, is how to uh, save um, code snippets. I think it's probably one of the greatest um, features added to Xcode 4.0. So let's just say we have a real common um, piece of code that we use a lot. Let me find something in mine here, just a second. Uh, So here's a piece of code that I use a lot in my projects, and we'll talk more about how I can eliminate output code um, that NSLog generates in release mode. You don't want that all those comments and output being sent to uh, a user's iPhone or their iPad, um, and so we can go ahead and, and eliminate that. But the first step is to obviously type it in our header file, and, and I'll show you how to do the rest later on in our, one of our next sessions. But I want to save this so that as I use other projects and make uh, make more projects, I can go ahead and save this and then reuse it later on just by calling it up. So if I drag this over here from my code, and if I just drag it onto my code snippet piece, and if I click, and it will go ahead and add it. It says my code snippet. If you don't see this in yours, just go to view utilities code snippet library and it will show up. 
Now once you've done that, just go ahead and click on it and say edit. And we can call it um, uh, debug. Debug log, and I'm going to make my shortcut. It's the same thing, debug log. So when I type it, it will automatically code complete for us. All right, so there it is. It's in there. And if I delete this here, and let me get back into my editor mode. So I've deleted it now. And now if I'm in any other project or file and I want to uh, type that in there, um, without having to copy and paste it from another piece of code, I can just start typing debug log. Boom, there it all is. Or I could drag it from here as well, and um, it would be all good to go. All right, I named, actually, I got two the same here. I'm going to go ahead and call that debug log. Let me just change this debug log header. So the next time I use it, I use debug log header. This is the other piece for it. Now, sometimes though, you um, have a code snippet like I have. Instead of using ns log, I use debug log, which I'll show you a bit later on. And um, you'll want to use some parameters here instead of actually what is um, typed in. So what that code looks like is it is the greater than less than sign, the hash hash sign or pound pound, which is right there, and then um, whatever you want to show up here. So I always type a parameter is going to come in here and hit done. So now if in my header file I want to use the word um, debug log, I just type debug and I think there it is. It comes up, it enters that code, and it um, says it needs to have a parameter there. And I can type in my parameter, whatever it's going to be. All right. Also, the nice thing is with um, um, if I'm using the LLVM compiler, which I hope all of you are, the new LLVM of 2.0 compiler gets um, used now all the time for new projects. If you have an old project, you need to set it. And this needs to be set to LLVM 2.0 uh, compliant. And then you'll get, there we go, sorry about that. Um, then you'll be able to use this fix it here. And um, it will give you, so let's just say, it, as, you're, as you're typing things, it kind of compiles behind the scene to tell you before it compiles what you have and what you did wrong. And so I can just go ahead and click on it and it says, hey, you're probably missing a semicolon here. Do you want to fix it? And I can go ahead and say yes, and it will put it in there for me. And there's some keyboard shortcuts that you can use automatically uh, to provide you that functionality as well. And um, anyway, um, we'll go ahead and talk about a lot more of the features and functionality with Xcode, including how to do build schemes how to use it with repositories, and also some of the debugging features as well. I hope you enjoyed the, this short little YouTube video. For those of you that are listening live, which happens every Wednesday night, you can go ahead and um, hang on, and I'll take any of your questions at the end. Also, if you'd like to, just go to my website at excelme.com. It has all the other recordings. Um, for my YouTube videos as well as subscribing. If you subscribe, you automatically get notified um, of any type of, of um, new releases that I've put out on the YouTube. Um, it usually happens on the weekly basis and here's how you can go ahead and look at the past free ones as well as view the YouTube channel and subscribe and also attend the live webinars. Anyway, thanks for attending. We'll see you next week. Good night.